Information dissemination is a central topic in distributed computing and has been studied since 1980s. We study a protocol that uses moving agents to disseminate information in a graph. In particular, we focus on the broadcast time of the protocol in some general classes of sparse graphs and also in balanced trees and grid graphs. In this talk, presented for the International Symposium on Distributed Computing, I will state the results and give some intuition, but will skip technical details of most proofs, which you can find in the full version of the paper. This is joint work with George Jakupis and Thomas Sauerwald. Let's start by introducing the protocol that we call Visit Exchange. In a given graph G, a source vertex S is initially informed, shown in red here. N agents are distributed according to the stationary distribution of G, which means that the position of each agent is random, proportional to the degree of each vertex. The agents then perform a simple random walk synchronously. When an agent visits an informed vertex, it becomes informed. And when an informed agent visits an uninformed vertex, the vertex becomes informed. One can think of the process as a virus spreading in a moving population where both the population members and the environment can become infected and there is no recovery. The broadcast time is the number of rounds until all vertices become informed. In our paper, we study this value for sparse graphs. As mentioned earlier, rumor spreading protocols have been studied extensively. Perhaps the simplest of these is push where at each round, every informed vertex informs a randomly selected neighbor. Again, the broadcast time is defined similarly. The broadcast time of push and related processes is known with respect to various graph parameters, for example, the conductance, the diameter and max degree, etc. In many cases, for example in expanders, these processes take logarithmic time and yet are very simple. We started studying visit exchange, asking the question of how fast is agent-based rumor spreading. In our previous result, we showed that in non-regular graphs, push and visit exchange protocols are not equivalent in terms of their broadcast time. Consider most extreme non-regular case, the star graph. By the coupon collector problem, push takes n log n rounds to complete in this graph while visit exchange takes logarithmically many rounds. The intuition is that in graphs with hubs, visit exchange seems to be faster, which can be attributed to the fact that each edge is equally likely to be used in each round. Note that the per round message complexity of the two protocols is the same, linear in N. We should also note that there are examples where the push is faster than visit exchange. These examples are presented in our referenced paper. What about regular graphs, where every vertex has the same degree d? It is natural to expect that push and visit exchange have the same broadcast time in this case, because at any fixed round the expected number of agents at each node is exactly 1. Consider this example, where vertex u is informed at round t. Given this state, the agents are not distributed uniformly randomly in subsequent rounds, Thus, we cannot argue that U contains constant number of agents in expectation. However, if D is at least logarithmic, by a churn of bound, U's neighborhood contains in the order of D agents with high probability. Therefore, we can assume that in the next round, U indeed receives constant number of agents in expectation, independently from the past, denoted by the conditioning on K, which fixes the execution of visit exchange until round t. We can then use a natural coupling between push and visit exchange and show that visit exchange follows the same informing path in the graph as push taking asymptotically the same time and vice versa. Notice that d being at least logarithmic here is critical in the argument. In this paper, we present techniques to circumvent that requirement to derive bounds for sparse graphs. But first, we show that push and visit exchange do not have the same asymptotic runtime in all regular graphs. This is our first new result. 
To build a counterexample, we start from a three regular graph of logarithmic diameter. Then, we create square root of n ladder graphs containing logarithmic n divided by two vertices and attach them to the initial graph as shown in the picture. The edges at the end of the ladders are identified with existing edges in G. The probability that one of the ladder graphs is empty at the start is 1 divided by 2 square root of n, which implies that with constant probability there is an empty ladder graph hi to start with. In polylogarithmic number of rounds, only polylogarithmic number of agents can ever enter hi, which by a result by Alon and colleagues need at least a log square n divided by log log n time to cover hi. Thus, we can lower bound visit exchanges broadcast time by log n square. This shows a logarithmic discrepancy between push and visit exchange in a regular graph, since push completes the broadcast time in O of log n rounds. I should mention that it is not clear whether such a result holds for graphs of larger diameter. In other words, the discrepancy may be of an additive squared logarithmic factor. Next, I will present upper bounds on the broadcast time of visit exchange for some general classes of sparse graphs, grid graphs, and balanced trees. The first bound is for sparse deregular graphs. The broadcast time is at most d times the diameter of the graph with an additive term of log cube n divided by d. The tilde here hides log log n terms and with high probability means with probability at least 1 minus n to negative power. This bound is similar to the bound on push with respect to the diameter, a result already mentioned in this talk obtained by Feige and colleagues. The previous counterexample with ladder graphs shows that the additive term here cannot be of the same order as in push. It must be at least of order log n square. We conjecture that it is indeed log square n. Our next result represents the broadcast time of visit exchange with respect to the average degree of the graph, if the minimal degree is of the same order as the average degree. This bound is unlikely to be tight, but it is interesting as there is no analog of it in push or related processes. For example, in graphs where the average degree is constant, like in trees, Visit exchange is guaranteed to be polylogarithmic times diameter. This is not the case for push, for example in star graphs as we've already seen. The proofs of the previous two results have many similarities and later in the talk we will present the proof for this result. Finally, we show that in regular expander graphs of constant degree, visit exchange runs in logarithmic time. This is also the case for other rumor spreading protocols, including for larger values of d. At the moment, we lack a tight bound for the case when d is super constant, but we believe that the result should still hold. Next, we discuss the visit exchange process on balanced trees. For any BRE tree, we have that the broadcast time is at most h log h plus log n, where h is the height of the tree. Here, B does not have to be a constant and the bound works up to the value of n for B, which corresponds to star graph. For a binary tree, when B is equal to 2, the bound is log n times log log n. We show that this bound is tight by arguing that there is a subtree of height log log n that never receives an agent. So in fact, this is a lower bound on the cover time of n parallel random walks in a binary tree that start from stationarity. Note that push processes broadcast time is logarithmic for a binary tree. By small modifications, we can make the binary tree into a regular graph, creating another example of a graph where there is a discrepancy between push and visit exchange, though the log log n gap is much smaller in this case than in the previous counter example. However, as we increase b, reaching the star graph at the extreme point, visit exchange becomes faster than push when b is of the order of log n. This reinforces the earlier intuition that in graphs with hubs, visit exchange is faster. 
Our final result is on the visit exchange process on a k-dimensional grid graph where k is a constant. We show that the broadcast time is asymptotically the same as the diameter of the grid, which is clearly tight. This upper bound holds for the push process too, however it is highly non-trivial to prove it for visit exchange. To see why, consider the one-dimensional grid, that is a path graph, drawn in a circular shape here to save space. In order for progress to be made, there needs to be an agent that moves from the most recently informed vertex in the right direction. Consider the gap around the most recently informed vertex, that is the number of vertices without agents after it. It is shown in a blue rectangle here. It is not hard to see that the gap can be up to logarithmic in n. Thus, in those instances, it can take polylog n number of rounds to inform one new vertex. However, we are able to show that the gap is of constant length for most of the rounds, so the logarithmic gap is rare. This suffices to prove the upper bound. Our argument is a simplified version of the scaling technique developed by Kesten and Sidoravicius, who used it to study virus spread by parallel and continuous random walks on infinite graphs. We proceed to the proof of one of our main results. The bound on the broadcast time of visit exchange with respect to the average degree of the graph. We fix a vertex u at distance k from the source vertex and bound the number of rounds until u becomes informed with high probability via shortest path from s to u, that is, all the vertices on the shortest path become informed one by one. Then a union bound proves the theorem. So suppose at some round ui is informed as shown in the picture. Roughly speaking, we show that given this state, after at most log squared n rounds, the next vertex, ui plus 1, becomes informed with probability at least a constant divided by the average degree of the graph. This is the success probability of one phase, denoted by p. We can argue that the phases are successful independently from one another, thus, by the expectation of a geometric random variable, visit exchange should make progress along the path after one divided by p rounds in expectation. By considering the vertices of the path one by one and using a Chernoff bound for geometric random variables, we are able to prove the result. Let's introduce some notation before we go into the details of the theorem. In the proof, it will be convenient to represent the stationary distribution of node u as its degree divided by n times the average degree. Notice that the relation of the minimal and average degrees implies that this value is at least epsilon divided by n for some epsilon. Next, as we have already seen, the number of agents at node u at round t is denoted by n u t. The key definition we work with is n hat u, which is the expected number of agents at u in round t plus r for any given execution of visit exchange up to round t. This execution is denoted by kt. n hat can also be written as the following sum, where pvu superscript r is the probability that a random walk starting from node v is at node u after exactly r steps. So this product is simply the expected number of agents that visit u at round t plus r, having been at v at round t. And of course, we have to take the sum over all such vertices v. With this definition, we will show that for a value of r that is square logarithmic, n hat u is at least the degree of u divided by twice the average degree of the graph for all vertices u and all rounds that we need to consider. So essentially, this guarantees that given any execution up to round t, if we wait for r more rounds, then we will have some lower bound on the number of agents visiting u. We can use these agents to inform the neighbor of u if u is already informed itself. Again, this lower bound is on the expected number of agents, not the actual number. As we will see, we are able to get this bound because in r rounds, the agents mix enough for us to use concentration inequalities. We proceed to outlining the proof of the last statement. 
First, we see that the expectation of n hat is simply the degree of u divided by the average degree. Thus, we need to show its concentration away from half of its mean. To do this, we represent n hat as a sum of random variables yg over all agents. So yg is the contribution to n hat by agent g. We do this because the variables yg are independent due to the fact that the agents make independent random walks. By some algebra and using the reversibility of the walks, we can compute the second moment of yg exactly. Recall that PUU superscript 2R is the probability that a random walk starting at node U returns there in exactly 2R steps. Now that we have represented n hat as a sum of independent random variables, we can apply McDiarmid's inequality on that sum and upper bound the probability that n hat is less than half of its expectation. We get a bound that involves the return probability to vertex u in 2R rounds. From a result by Oliviera and Perez, we can upper bound this return probability by 1 divided square root of R. Finally, by taking r equal to the square logarithmic of n, we prove that n hat is at least its expectation divided by 2 with high probability. By a union bound, this statement holds for all vertices and rounds simultaneously with high probability, proving the statement at the top. We return to analyzing the information propagation through the shortest path to vertex u. Suppose as round t the vertices until w are informed. By the previous derivation, in expectation, after r rounds there must be at least degree of w over twice the average degree agents at vertex w. Once again, since the agents move independently after round t, we can use Chernoff's concentration inequality and lower bound the probability that nw at t plus r round is at least its expectation over 2, hence the quarter in the denominator. Note that here we are working with the actual number of agents at w in round t plus r, instead of the expectation, as we've been doing so far. So, with constant probability, the event E holds, that is the number of agents at w, is proportional to its degree. In order for the next node in the path to get informed in round t plus r plus 1, one of these agents must move to ui plus 1. That probability is given by the following formula, which is at least a constant over the average degree of the graph, denoted by p prime. Since the event E holds with constant probability, we can remove the condition on it and get that we inform ui plus 1 in the next r plus 1 rounds after round t with a success probability of p. Thus, in each phase of r plus 1 rounds, we make progress along the path with probability p imp independently from the past. By iterating this argument for k plus log n over p phases, the last vertex become informed with high probability, due to a concentration inequality on geometric random variables. The theorem follows by doing the same for every node u and taking a union bound. So, we prove the bound on broadcast time that depends on the average degree of a graph. The proof of the next theorem for sparse regular graphs uses similar ideas, though is slightly more involved and requires analyzing the cases where d is at most log log n and at least log log n separately. To prove the bound for balanced trees, we also analyze the propagation of information via the path from the source vertex to a target vertex. However, we use a different, a pipelining argument to show that the vertices on this path receive agents at a constant rate independently from one another. The proof of the bound for expander graphs is different in that we do not prove information propagation via a specific path. Instead, we study the set of informed vertices at any round and show that it increases by a constant factor every constant number of steps which results in the logarithmic bound. This is similar to the methods used to bound the broadcast time of push and related processes. Finally, as mentioned earlier, 
We use yet another method for the grid graph, inspired by the works of Kesten and Sidoravicius on parallel walks on infinite grids. I hope that I managed to interest you in moving agent processes in graphs. In the visit exchange process, the agents interact with the environment, that is the vertices. Another variant is when the interaction only happens between the agents, but the vertices are not involved. Information dissemination is perhaps the simplest problem one could pose in either of these versions, but more complex tasks performed by moving agents could be studied too. For example, load balancing either among agents or among vertices using the agents. In future, we plan to work on such problems.